They are dealers in all types of mattresses. So get in touch with Aplada.com for your latest foam, ash foam, and any other relation that has to do with mattresses. Ladies and gentlemen, we went to kickstart the show, but before we do so, I want two reps from the kick space to give us some great moves in just a matter of five minutes. When we are back, we will get interacting with our special guest of honor. So DJ. Yes, and then uh, so I grew up in a Catholic uh, house, and I was actually being prepared to be a reverend father. 
Hongkong Secondary School then. So I think around 1973, I was born in 59, by the way. So I'm a 55 year old young boy. Very to 56. So I think 1974 we moved to Laura. Yes. And then I, start, I started primary school in 1975 at uh, Laura Ely Primary School. Now it's called uh, Cabo Primary. So there I attended from primary one to primary six. And I must say, even at that very, I remember very well primary school was very active, very active in sports and in everything, even back at home. You know, so I became you know, uh, uh, doing and the first born too. You know, so I was very uh, active uh, both at school and at home. You know, and then uh, growing up, this, this was very interesting. I had a lot of siblings around. My grandfather, as I said, a catechist, gave birth to 12 children. Six men, six women, one wife. You know, so I had a lot of uh, uh, cousins, you know, and then we played around a lot. And most of us were contemporaries the same age. So growing up was very, very interesting, primary school. And we used to do a lot of farming, even at that age, as you know. You know, farming is, 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 is seen as a, let's say, a household chore for those of us uh, up north here. So I did a lot of household work, and being the firstborn, and of course cleaning the house and what have you, and also weeding now at that very early age, you know, and coupled with things that we did at the, at the manual work at the primary school. So they helped to build one quite well up to date. So how many siblings do you have, Commander? Yes, I think we are, we are, we are eight. I have uh, seven, sorry, seven uh, sisters, and then two brothers. Uh, two step brothers and one uh, and three step sisters. My Balika mother died in 1980 when I was in primary six. And then my father married in 1985 when I was in Cuba. Yes, yeah, so I have uh, a couple of siblings of eight, eight. Yes. So growing up in the midst of uh, seven other siblings could not have been that easy. Um, do you remember some fun memories that you had with them? Oh, yes. And being the firstborn and being very active, I tended to, to knock them on the head, as you know, seeing as I Were you a bully? Oh, well, I, 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 I think so, because uh, at very early age, even at the primary school, I joined the Boy Scout. You know, so Boy Scout, as you know, we are, we are trained to be very active. So I think I, 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 I like that. So I think I sort of took that on my little sisters, you know, especially the one who followed me. Unfortunately, she's late, but uh, you have very fond memories. They she grew up also taking up for me, and then still a lot of discipline on the, on the junior ones. You know, so a lot of uh, 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 fond memory boys. I know she used to join in the farming, everything that I actually grew up. And I remember we used to, you know, uh, the garden at the back, staying in Laura. I would get a portion, give her the same portion, the same size, and ask that she should, she should make sure she finishes before me. That was quite a... Uh, uh, and we of uh, training her the hard way. Mm. I think she was, she was up to it. I really am very fond of most of her. I'm sure whatever she is, she's uh, very happy looking at me from the top there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Commander, for want of time, I want yes, us to yes, continue yes, yes. with the preparation of the steel as well. Yes. So, I'll leave the, 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 the saucepan with some oil to start with. So I need some help to, to get this. Uh, So you still live on our Facebook wall at Radio 92.1. Also live on our terrestrial radio at 92.1. We have in our meetings edition, first ever perhaps within the boundaries of the Upper West region. Remember that Radio 1 has always been the pay setters when it comes to organization of events. Not only just events, we are lead when it comes to information entertainment and whatever is associated with the transmission of radio. Like I indicated earlier on, Dakulada.com uh, is also here and sponsors this program. The mattress you sleep on is very important to your overall health and well-being. A good mattress gives you comfort and take away body pains, waist pains, joint pains, 
neck pains, body itches, and boost your sexual libido. From located opposite the MTN office right here in Uwa. Available at dakulada.com as student mattresses, one and a half mattresses, double mattresses, queen size, king size mattresses, students below the end office or visit dakulada.com on Facebook, TikTok. You can also search www.dakulada.com on Google or any search engine to see products and prices. Call dakulada.com on the following numbers. 055 Zero 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 two four two five or zero five zero six three five eight zero zero nine. That's come by never buy. So commander, what are you doing currently? Yes, just putting some onion in there. So let it there. So our commander is currently preparing what many have described as the Cuban rice. Uh, those of you that are present here, and let me say, when we were out there in Cuba, almost at a point in time, you see that everybody is cooking something. Mm. But whatever it is, it is rice. It is rice. Yes. Always rice. Yes. I wish uh, I had a, uh, uh, I sent a message to one of my Cuban friends to join me here. We didn't join me here to, to, to help uh, uh, get this done. So, so come on. And, even, and when I was also outside as well, as I said, I could prepare rice and one day and, and then keep it on there. Eat it every day, so Saturday. Yeah, because I was alone. So, uh, uh, and also, also always, there's always Gary. Let me not forget, always Gary. Gary, and up to date, I, I, if you come to where I say there's Gary, you go to my house, come in, there's always Gary. You know, I believe that. Uh, there's a lot of work to do, and you must always be ready something quick to eat, and you can get going. So, Commander, let me begin with your education. You already mentioned you went to primary. I want us to leave out the SS and jump straight to the tertiary. Which school did you attend, and what caused you to stay? Okay, so let me just say that quickly. I attended Zavia two years, 81, 83. I left for Cuba, and I attended, uh, completed the secondary school, went to a free university. I went to university to be a five-year course in civil engineering specialized in structural design. I was in Cuba for 11 years. I came back in 84 with a master's degree. And then I did my one year national service with the Minister of uh, Defense, including the prison service. But they advertised my engineer. I was a civil engineer, structural engineer, and I applied to my joint. That's how, uh, so that is it in terms of the course I did. And then, uh, the yes, I have wanted to find out from you because if you look at the forces, particularly within the Upper West region, you realize that it is as if your your service, the prison service, is dominated numbers. Numbers. Yes. Yeah, so I, I want to ask whether is it because there's the thinking out there that right. your training is not that vigorous right. as compared to the army and that of the police. Why are a lot of people joining the prison service? Wow, that is that is uh, that is a uh, mistake. They may go to jungle welfare, warfare, they do so many things, they do swimming and what have you. As a prison officer, there are certain things that I am also trained in that they are not. I did those that pass through others to join the service. Well, do you really think they have the calling or they just want a stepping stone? Well, it's pretty obvious that for the majority of them, it's just because they want a job and not for the love of the service. You know, and, and I will encourage those who support people to get into the services that yes do so but look for those who are qualified and who have the love for the job that way it will be easier for them to be trained and they'll come out as good officers if the situation where someone is just picked from the home and just sent to training school he or she passes out doesn't learn the rudiments of the job and they become difficulties on the ground for us to train them so it becomes a big challenge for those of us who have to train them. So my call is that, yes, you can help someone, but help those who are qualified. So it becomes easier for them to go to the training and come out as good officers. That way, the country as a whole will benefit from their efforts. But I must admit that we have quite some few who actually don't know why they're in the service. 
Okay, so we having a healthy interaction with engineer James Mayer Banfudeme, he who is the commander of the Ghana Prison Service here in the Upper West region. Once again, we are live on Radio 192.1, live also on our Facebook wall at Radio 192.1. We are currently the maiden edition of Heroes Kitchen, right here, first of its kind in the Upper West region. My special guest that have proven to have dignified himself beyond his profession and even family wife is here, preparing what his code service persons would describe as Cuban rice. The rice is already on, the steel is also on. But Commander, back to what we were discussing. As one who has reached the commanding level in the service, what would you say is the biggest threat particularly regarding politicians now invading or involving themselves in the recruitment of personnel? Well, I think this is an issue that it appears it has come to stay. It's not the best, I must be honest. It's a bet. It's as it has come to stay. So what I tell my officers is that whoever goes to training school and comes out, it's our responsibility to further train that person, give the person on the job training with a person they are already in the service so that they can become better officers than they left the training school. In any case, all of us, whatever we do, we always keep learning. So with that background, I keep encouraging my officers that. And I talk to those who have come out of training schools, new ones that say thank you to whoever gets to the job, be grateful to him or her, but now take your life into your own hands, your destiny, and learn to be a good officer. That way, the one who will help you be proud of you. It's not good that you misbehave, and then you are sent off. That way, you will be an embarrassment to the person who helped you. Yes, so that, that's what I'll say. But I just hope that uh, uh, we'll, we'll get back to the period where advertisements are made publicly. People attend, they go through the selection process in hoping across the country, and then the best one is be selected. Yes, I think that, that, that's the best way to go. Okay. Get the best. Thank you. So, Commander, I want to find out from you. Uh, one would have expected that as an engineer, you will be in one of these big law serials offices where you will be highly valued. But here you are in the services. What's the problem? Did you make a wrong choice? <laughs> Very interesting question. You know, in the prison service, we, we, we have the inmates, we have the inmates, we have the prison officers, and we need to expand our facilities and improve upon the existing ones. So innovation, construction, and that's what I did when I joined the service in 1995, passing out in 1986, July. So I led building teams to all the prison establishments there to, under, to undertake some construction innovation works, to expand the service, and in some cases to build camp prisons so it can be contest the prison. So I'm happy I joined the service. So I'm no, no regrets at all? At all, trained as a prison officer. And then with my professional background, I think I'm very helpful in the service. And of course, even when I, and that gave me the opportunity to even go out there and work under the ages of the UN, which we will get to that as, as, as we move along. Okay. So no regrets at all. Thank you. Thank you so much. You heard from Engineer James Mayela Bamsudeming, who is the regional commander for the Ghana Prison Service. Permit me at this point to acknowledge some revered personalities that have joined us this evening on our main edition of Heroes Kitchen right here on the premises of Radio War 92.1. I have here the general manager of Smog City Business, Madame Josephine Sheila. If you are here, please wave on to us. Let's give her a round of applause. We appreciate your presence this evening. Also in our midst is AE01, one, one wife. <laughs> Are you bound just to marry one wife? <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, sorry. Yes. We have a son, 12 years, talking uh, locks. I think he's taking to the father. You know, and then I have uh, three ladies that have grown up with my 
wife and I, right from infancy. You know, but uh, biologically we have a son. And then, uh, and then, uh, then we are a very lovely family. You know, I, I, I uh, one of the, 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 my daughters, let me call her now, she's at the nursing training. She did, uh, she's uh, doing a degree in Accra. And then when I went to my house, not too well the last time to, to Accra, she was the one who almost saved my life. So that is it, and then the other is uh, uh, attending the Tenneka School, you know, and the last one is in, sorry, is in uh, uh, SS. Okay. Yes, so, so I take a lot of pride in them okay. as well. So, Commander, is your wife also with the president or any of the security service? No, I met my wife when she was a beautician. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautician, so I got to know all the hairstyles of our ladies, the big one, the, uh, I took pride in any Anything any that finished my work, I always sit at the salon, and I saw she was so very happy, senior officer, you know, yes. So, but she's drifted a bit now, and then she's now into all hands, but she does a lot of things with her hands. We went to farming, poultry, and then, uh, she prepares food, you know, when there's an occasion, she, she does a lot of things. That keeps her very busy. So, what is this one thing that attracted you to that particular lady? Is it her shape? Was it her shape? The way she walked? The way she talks? Tell it! I want to know. Just, just in one minute. You know, the, my, my, my cousin took me when I was in the search. My cousin took me to the house in Accra where there were three days. We entered there and then I sat in the hall and the three of them came down. As soon as she came down, I just knew that this must be. So, well, the way she talked about the first thing. As for men, as they, you have to you look at the lady, so that one was giving thick. Now, second thing was how she spoke. So that is important. You know, you have to be able to carry yourself very well, be polite, be respectful. We did the thing that also came out very strongly. And then she, 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 she came out talks along the did she, give you, did she give you some tough time? Well, of course, they always give up also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I kept on. You don't give up. When your eyes are, eyes are on the ball, you don't give up. You know. so, 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 so that's it. Yeah. There are so many married couples listening to you right. as we speak, and those even viewing you on our Facebook wall. Right. Right. Besides you married to this particular lady, I believe that your eyes are still catching on some other shapes similar to that of your wife. How have you always been able, particularly in the prison service where we see skin tight and then what have you, how have you been able to hold yourself as a couple to stay faithful? Right. Well, it's, 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 it's I can just say it's easy. Have you been seeing them? So, but let's show in my case where I've had the opportunity to be out there again for almost 11 years. Okay. But of course, it takes a lot of self-control. And uh, it's, it's, it's one has to, you have to know yourself. You may be able to know that, hey, let me take this. And here, as a commander, I'm commander. I cannot be seen to be setting a bad example. You know, so that is always at the top of my mind. In whatever I do in my approach and everything, you know, and, and, and what we are trying to draw the line, say, hey, let me check myself. Hey, check myself. So we are, I always say I'm perfect. I mean, no one is perfect, but we try to keep ourselves uh, and focus on the job. Uh, knowing that uh, you have a family, that's what we're thinking about you all the time. And then you need to do what you're supposed to do and not do what you're supposed to do. So we still live on Radio Wa 92.1. Let me at this point once again acknowledge some people that have found themselves here. We have DSP Sophia Jomeku, uh, who is head of finance. We also have DSP Nelson. Don Betere, no, no, Ire. Don, Don Betere, no, Ire. Also, in our midst is ASP Abudi Wahid Yahaya, who is a staff officer. ASP Adams Yakubu, also present here with us. We are live also on Bizarre TV and Multimedia on Facebook, Upper West Media. Dot net, upperwestmedia.net is also with us. So we acknowledge all other media partners present with us. We say thank you, thank you so, so much. At this point, I want us to go for a quick commercial break. When we are back, 
we will continue to have that interesting interaction with our special guest of honor, Mr. DJ. <laughs> Forget me, don't forget me, don't forget I'll make a man who can see somebody better than you. Oh, better, better, never throw my promise away. If you see somebody better than you, oh, better, better, never throw my promise away. Don't forget me, don't forget me. Caro, 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 ele se se, caro, 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 ele se se. Vete caro, caro, chama moni bolo ibo, ibo kaja baka kita bela. Caro, chama moni bolo ibo, ibo kaja baka kita bela. Tu boya, tu boya. If today we go see, if today we know see, if today we go down, if today we know that, if today we go eat, hey now who can eat, hey now who no eat, no malayu, no malayu. You know, man, my late father was one of those that were to organize people to go. So by once people were not ready to send their award, they told me, okay, then you have to go. So I had to go with my my uncle, who is. Uh, came back and he's back from the US and he comes so quite often. So the program on arrival was learning and the manual work. So we had two streams. Half the school go to classroom in the morning, the other half will go to farm. And the farm is to weed under the they have the grapefruits to weed under and then in the afternoon you change. And that prepared those of us who went to Cuba I must say. And it has, we, we, we became so connected that up to date, if you see a good number of our Cuban children, we are more united, connected, and even with our siblings. We were together there for so many, we know each other so well. And 
we see two kilos daily, it will be obvious. The way we, we, we at times, you know, some can't, if they can't go out, it's for the middle side. I, I forget I'm commander. We have to, you know, speak our, speak Spanish and, you know, we have the way of greeting. So we became so, so united. Now, we were put under the various classes at our previous educational level. So we're on the Isle of Youth. Then from there, go to the main uh, Cuba, as well, the, the island, and they now do the university course and they come home. Now, the early days, there were a lot of largesse in Cuba. So, so many you know was treating Cuba like one of its provinces. But from 89, we had this integration. The Soviet you know, the Perestroika, the Gorbachev, and what have you. So things became started becoming difficult. They used to, they used to, they used to give us stipend. They would feed us, they would give us a, a, a toughness, so many things. There were some of us at that age. I was 14 years when I was there. So imagine, we were very eager and we were there for 11 years without coming home for that period. We had no got used to. So conditions were quite okay. And then so it was when we went to the university, of course, things were uh, uh, they were still continuous to give us stipend that's the government of Ghana. You know, so comparatively there were other foreigners in Cuba from almost all African countries. It was a program that the late uh, Castro had for third world countries. You know, so it was a very excellent program. And then when it came to the courses that you would do. You know, we have some, some form of career guidance and counseling to enable you to see. And, and I must say this when I was going, I just felt that I should be an, I, I, I think an engineer. I didn't know what type of engineer. But somehow it, it was in my mind. So, Commander, you check the food uh, yes, so, so that the rice, uh, the, the rice is okay. 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 Yes. It will not be. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, 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 so you finish with your point and then. Yes, I think we are almost uh, set yeah. to with this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, Commander, let me find out from you. Rising through to become a, pre a, a prison commander yes. could not have been that easy. Growing up as a child to so where you are now, yes. what would you say have been your major challenge in life and how have you been able to maneuver your way through this particular challenge? I ask this question because it is possible that so many listeners and audience out there might be going through the same challenge and will be interested in how to maneuver to it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's basically it is uh, hard work. That's the common denominator. Hard work and getting the right guidance. Uh, I throughout life, I have an inquisitive mind, so I would like to ask the kids. So both when I came home, I did some during my national service, I'm making a lot of inquiries. My mind didn't go to the security services. But I saw that if I did my study with a military, 49 engineering regiment, they have an engineering setup. Why don't I join? And then when the prison service did the advertisement, they asked for an engineer. I know in the police, they have their industrial way. So I, I always felt that, okay, if I can join, that as I said, I did a lot of research within that one year national service. So I want to talk, I want to, relate and tell people when you are doing national service or whatever it is, something you are doing in between, try to get the necessary information. There's a lot of information. Now we have the benefit of technology. You don't need to go and meet someone face to face before you get any information. Right from your home, you can get a lot of information. So you're getting the information, ask the right questions, and when you get the opportunity, work hard. When I was doing national service, I was in a crowd, I was staying far away. And while we delay, it comes a very small. I used to walk those who are from Jogulu to 37, those who know that route. I used to walk every day because the transport was that high. And, and, and uh, today they call it government. Mm -hmm. Those days it was, uh, uh, of course, a uh, guy. Uh, Commander, check on the stew and see what else. put the, 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 the fires off. Mm. Yeah, so the, my, the stew is okay. okay. The type of stew is okay. It's good to go. Cuban stew. Oh, yes. Yes, everything at uh, 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 the Cuban. Uh -huh. Yes. Oh, that, that camera I want to capture, okay, good. if you don't mind. Good. Yes. So, we acknowledge the presence of all media partners. Uh -huh. uh, Upper West Media, I see you here, I see other media partners, even the prison service uh, staff is also present. We are also grateful. Beside media, multimedia is here. Always grateful to you, uh, experts in live stream of all kinds of events. So if you want any event 
to be live streamed, please get in touch with Bizarre Media. Pillar Dean is also here. Ghana Airborne Scouts, I acknowledge your presence once again. And then um, we also do have in our presence Sir Charles of Case Discovery Channel. So, Mr. Charles, if you are here, please give a round of applause to Mr. Charles. Uh, we are grateful. Pillar Dean of Tibo. Uh, we are grateful. Sumal FM, I see you as a supporting media partner. Uh, we also have White Sports TV. We are grateful for partnering with us. Somali FM, always grateful for the partnership. Upper West Media, we are grateful for your presence. Uh, Radio Progress, grateful for your partnership. Upper West TV and Derry G TV are all present to support the occasion. We are almost running out of time, but my special guest is here very, very soon. I want to believe that uh, we would be doing the eating. Double uh, Memora Academy, Mr. Al Hansan Double Malik, he who is the proprietor, has graced this occasion. Please, if you are present, wave on to us, Mr. Malik. We are grateful for your presence. He's a proprietor for Double Memorial Academy. So. You have made mention of the challenge which you said that you've been able to overcome it through hard work. I want to know if you have mentors in life. Who is your main mentor in life and why did you choose that particular person? Yes, uh, in the, in the, of course, when I'm that, I mean, uh, was, was as well very hard working. When I came back to Cuba after being away for 11 years, I could see the old man Work deep into the night, even with the lantern, you know, and, and, and that 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 that's uh, I picked it from him, and to date, uh, I'm sure uh, my staff will tell you uh, whoever who has had the opportunity of uh, engaging me anyhow, I I I don't get tired. I'm always on the because hard work pays. In fact, there are times that hard work can cover for lack of knowledge. At times, hard work can cover. For lack of knowledge. So whatever you do, hard work must underpin this. And I want to and I want to speak to the young people that the challenges that we had growing up, you have an additional challenge, and that is that of technology. Easy access to information, good, but it can also be bad. Now it's good to know self and get the right information. You go online, you can get the good, the bad, the ugly. You have to pick and choose. So that is an advantage going for the young ones, as I said. You have an additional challenge that we didn't have growing up. That was technology. Now I'm talking about room of the sources and my late brother, surely, growing up. Now in the service, I've had a couple of uh, officers that uh, I've looked up to. But I can just mention three. One of them, uh, late uh, the director of Prechun, is the service those in the office, I mean, the service who may who uh, have been the service for years. He was a typical workaholic. He was a no-nonsense man. Do this, if you say sit here, sit there, you say that you have no problem with it. If he comes and you are not there, then he's not forgiven. And I think I'll take a bit of that. Now, that officer also, I, I looked up to him, who guided me a lot when I said, did he uh, retire? Especially when I wanted to, 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 to go to work with the UN. He was already there, so I looked out to him and he guided me. So I also get the opportunity, anybody who approaches me and wants to have that experience, I'm able to give that information. Now the third one is one of our former director general, uh, Dr. Richard Quinlan. I learned a lot from this man. This, this is your typical workaholic, very knowledgeable, very bold, very confident, and, and he never got tired. He will give different assignments to so many people, but he has a tap on whatever everybody is doing. He gives an assignment to check how far, how far. So today, when I give an assignment to my officers, I, I will tell you, you tell me you are on it. You are on it means what? You should tell me exactly you are on it. This is what I've done, this is what I've done. I say, okay, then I see you as serious. So uh, a couple of people have modeled me in life. And it's good to have a good model. It's good, but that's your benchmark. And another advice, when you are aiming at anything in life, 
aim very high. The adage that eyes in the skies feet on the ground. Aim very high. Knowing that when you are falling, you fall in here. I don't aim you. Thank you. So, Commander, still relating, I have just two more questions and then we'll start eating. Uh, a bit on your profession. You made a profound statement and let me quote you. You said that had it not been because of the imperfect justice system that we have, a lot of the inmates that we see in there will not be there. What did you mean by that statement and if you can clarify it a bit? Okay, so let me put it this way. Majority of the inmates who are in prison deserve to be there. Let me speak to that. Now there are some that do not deserve to be there. I mean, no system is perfect. So our criminal justice system, which constitutes the police, the judiciary, and the prisons. Let's say there's commotion in town. You know, when you hear people, Julo, uh, Julo, Julo, Nanyo, people start congregating. Now, if the police come, they'll swoop on everybody. They will go and do identification. Before you see someone passes through, maybe an innocent bystander caught in the swoop. Before you see a sent to court, and maybe you didn't get, uh, 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 let's say, a good lawyer or whatever, then you find yourself in prison. So, those of us who are outside, let's be careful. Because some of us have committed more crimes than those who are in there. It's just that we have not been caught yet. So, let's do things that would still keep us away from trouble. And those who are in there, let's visit them. Everybody deserves a second chance. You know that people commit some heinous crimes, murder, rape, you know, uh, 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 um, incest, what have you. And you are wondering, can a human being do this? But if someone is in there for such a crime, currently in our books, the death penalty has been scrapped, except for treason. So it means that whoever is convicted, even by death, by violence, squad, the person has hoped that he or she when will come out of prison. So you forget about those people, they come out when they want to happen. And you and I will not be safe. So let's reach out to them. So I want to use this opportunity to indicate that those of us who are here, let's be advocates for the prisons. Wherever you are, they are talking about prisons. This is the prison. The prison is a security area. There is not a secret place. Come around. You come and visit. You come, there are officers in front, they are holding raffles, looking very... Uh, mean, but they are very kind, they are very polite. I told them anything you want to just make a little donation, we will accept it. Thank you so much, Commander. We still have in the house Engineer James Mayalas Banfudema, who is the regional commander for the Ghana Prison Service. Special guest here on the maiden editions of Heroes Kitchen right here on Radio One. So some few years down, you will be retiring. After retirement, what is it that we would be seeing you doing in particular? Okay. Uh, by God's grace, Allah's blessing, I, I have prepared myself uh, uh, all along. You know, and having had the benefit of uh, uh, being out there, as I said, I, I, I mentioned one of my mentors, Billy Baniba, who, when I wanted to join the UN, he guided me. So, first, as an engineer, so you don't go on retirement. I'm retired from the service, put out the uniform, but I continue to be a civil structure engineer. So I can set up my own consultancy if I want. You know, and, and the building industry is one that uh, uh, they always, always the work to do. Now, also having had the opportunity to work out there with the UN for more 12 years, I've had the benefit of being trained in the area of, uh, if you want to say, peace support operation, human rights, human rights, sector reform, bill of law, correction, a gamut of things. Indeed, at a point in time when I was in the mission, I was, I was in South Sudan, and for Haiti, Ethiopia, and the chat. If I Haiti, when the earthquake happened in 2010, if you recall, this will you recall. At that time, I happened to be the only, only civil engineer in a UN mission with a prison background. So I was sent to Haiti, I was there for five months to assess their prisons and make recommendations. Now, while in the mission, I used to be invited to facilitate at the Kofi Annan Center, at the Institute of Peace Support Operations in Kenya, and the UN has a training school in Italy. You know, so I was quite busy because I prepared myself in all these areas. 
At the point, I had to even stop and say my work was wasn't allowing me to be traveling to be as a So that is something I can also take up. Now, uh, issues like AD and alternative dispute uh, uh, resolution is something that I, I intend to go for the course. So that when I go to retirement, that is something that can also keep me a bit busy. Now, beyond that, I'm a very voracious and very active network marketer. It's a business I've been since 2011 and I think we up to today. So, uh, outside, outside of the Outside a uniform, by God's grace, by Allah's blessing, I have a very, very busy life. And I tend to keep myself busy. So that can hit 100 and above until you look the way I look. So, one last question yes. for you, which is that your wife, which you describe as so beautiful, is listening to you. Perhaps there's this thing that you have always wanted to tell your wife in appreciation to the love and the kiss that she has given you, that you have not been able to say. Today is the opportunity. What would you want to tell your wife? I believe she's doing the money. Well, just to tell her that I love her. Who is that? She's the one who's <laughs> That's the name, Winifred. Yeah, she's the one who gives me uh, sound advice. And let me say this. For those of us who are married, we are married man here. Uh, what your wife says, listen. I attended a course at the uh, uh, Game Park 204. And the facilitator told me two things which have guided me up to date. Say we are a married man, you either be happy or you are right. You are either happy or you are right. You cannot be happy and be right at the same time. What it means is that when you are wrong, I apologize. When you are not wrong, still apologize. That way you be happy. And then you also said, eh? When you are right, when you are wrong, quickly apologize. When you are even not wrong, still apologize. I apologize for not being wrong. That way you'll be very happy. And then you also said finally that when you are torn between two things, and that is when you are the administrative level, the big person, two things, A, B, when you are in doubt, ask your wife. She will select one for you. Don't ask the reason why. Just go with it and you'll be right. Thank you so much. Please, let's give our... Here today to recite a poem. And my poem is entitled... I'm a child, not a bride. Slowly I move. Mother, father, where did I go wrong? Why can't I be educated? What is the difference between a boy and a girl? Why can't I deserve anyone's love? I have been still tapped as a girl in our society. Men come to pay for my drive, just for me to be a bride. I'm a child, not a bride. I believe education is for everyone. Treat me as such. Mommy, daddy, a girl place is not only in the kitchen. Trust everyone has a bright future, including I, the girl child. I'm not begging for food, neither for shame. I'm begging for education. With this, the child has to cry for help. I cry for help. I cry for help. A child so small, so vulnerable, so weak, helpless, powerless, not allowed to speak, lying awake in bed, knowing he'll soon appear frightened, trapped, living in a torturous nightmare. Body is shaking, trembling, within a preparing of a terrible act of sin. Left all alone with no one in sight, the abuse tried cries silently all through the night. How does one heal from such a horrible crime? The scars, damage, last a lifetime. Emotionally, I struggle to make it true, not knowing why I feel and act the way I do. The tragedy is over, but tomorrow is still there. I wonder if my output is a way to see. If anyone cares, oh please God, help me. I cried out to so much fear and doubt. Thank you. She don't cook well. Did you complain? Or, or you are the one who is cooking in the house? Good question. Let me say this. Yes, uh, of, when my wife cooks at home. Now let me say this that. Uh, and I'm not the type who uh, is very fussy about food. In fact, when I'm home, she says, why should I prepare? I say, prepare anything, anything that is fast. Well, I don't want her to go through a lot to prepare food. You know, so she does the cooking. Basically, rice and any other thing I know to do. When I was outside for 11 years, and I'm here alone. I'm here for the past eight months alone. I was in Kumasi for 10 months alone. 
I was able to 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 manage with my food. So food, so food in Shida Thank you. Yes, any other please? We are taking just three for want of time. If you have a question, you move forward. We are taking just three. I think uh, if I heard you right, you said you completed Xavier. Very good. At SS, there are a lot of things that happen. Some of us, when we go there, have nicknames. What was the nickname you had back in SHS? <laughs> okay, I think this Xavier, it's a one, two, it's a three. Now, in those days, when you went to Xavier, I went to preparatory. And in that first year, you do what they do in form one in other secondary schools. So when you go to Xavier form four, you were in form five in other secondary schools. And in form five, you now do revision. So after form one, that is form two, they will let for Cuba. That is how. Now I actually have been guided, to be honest. I was a choir type, a very uh, studious type. And then the, I was a member of the choir back at Xavier, very prayerful. You know, I said I was, I was being trained to become a reverend father. And back, to, and back in Cuba, I didn't have a guy named either. You know, if any of my Cuban kids was here, then, you know, I was a contest at guy, guy named, not me. So I don't know. <laughs> yes. Please, uh, James, to come to the program, Heroes and to be the main guest of Anna. Hey, wow. Oh, give her a round of applause. Thank you. So, uh, wow. It's a very question. Now, when the idea first came, I said, oh, okay, oh, okay. And I said, what, how was the format? Who are those who are going to be there? So I see this as an opportunity. And it's not just about me. That whatever I share, that's my thinking. That once I'm at the program, whatever I share, if that to get any young one, even just one, to get inspired, not to give up. That I came from a very humble background. Indeed, when we were to go to Cuba in 1983, we were camped first at uh, Legon and then later at Achimota. I can tell you that at Achimota, since we were so tough, I had one trousers. Two shirts. My eye clothes are one trousers, two shirts. And we have to be there for two weeks. When we also went to Cuba, every August, plane will come there with parcels for children whose you know, their parents were well to do. We never expected parcels, but we know our background. But that encouraged us to continue to learn and to do our best. So, my, my, my dear uh, daughter, so what inspired me was the fact that really whatever I'll share will inspire someone not to give up, to work hard, knowing that hard work is. Whatever situation you find yourself, work hard. There's always a night looking at you, looking at me. So I hope I answered your question somehow. Thank you. Thank you, Commander. Um, as I said, I, 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 I love the uniform. When I did my service with the military, 49th year regiment in 1995, when I end, I said, no, I think I should, the uniform, uh, uh, I can look smart in the uniform, and they have engineering wing in all the services, so I said, okay, let me just join, you know, so the motivation first, that I can practice my profession, and that I can also be a prison officer in this case. Yes. Please, sir, with the uniforms of the prison officers and the fire service, they are most likely to be the same. So how can we identify them? Okay, they are not exactly the same. Okay, my friends from fire, none of you see uniform. Okay, now the security said we have different, different uniforms. Some look similar, but they are not the same. Okay, good. So, okay, the lady, good. Uh, anyone, Dacrolin, officers? Okay. So, okay, this is, could even be the closest. But even when you see prisoners, we wear brown. So that brown is slightly different from the brown from fire. Ah, okay, so you see, I'm not good in colors. Yeah, so they are not the same. However, there are some private security services that were uniform that are very similar to some services. Yeah, but they are, they are, they are, they are different. If you join, you get to know the difference, yes. My name is Isa Kamdan. Please say, when we're growing, where, what are the, some of the challenges we are facing? Okay, so well, the challenges are very numerous. I remember in the primary school, uh, in early primary school, now couple of primary school. Every time we went home during the uh, uh, break time, there wasn't food for lunch, so it was granules we rely on, you know, and then we roast, we roast corn, we put in the packets, so all our packets were always black, you know, roast granules. So, so challenges uh, in terms of uh, coming from a poor background, but keeping focused, keep learning, and taking sports very seriously. 
that early age. We will keep you fit. And whatever you are doing, you'll be able to do it very well. Yes. Say, please, what's the difference between the Cuba internet, a educational system and that of Ghana? Okay. I think at a point, at a point, Ghana, we picked a bit from the Cuban system. When we had the senior high, now we are back to it again. But basically, the number of years, I think now they are apart in terms of the basic, the secondary. They have the pre-university. They still have the pre-university two years, no, three years. In the university for five years, depending on the course that you do. So there isn't much difference. Now, they are, uh, 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 the system, now all the foreigners have left. So all the facilities that were on the Isle of Youth, they have to convert them to other uses. So then I wouldn't say there's a big Hello. difference in terms of the educational system here and there. They are, they are just not the same. Please say, as the commander of the prisons, if a person commits a crime, can you advise the person or do anything that can change the mind? Or just to imprison the person is the best person? What do we do when people are in prison? We try to reform them or we just uh, warehouse them and leave in the room. Yes, so our main work as prisoners is to save custody, make sure they don't keep, see to their welfare, the food they eat, the water they drink, their health issue visit. And then to reform them, both to the religious, faith based organization play a key role. Their rehabilitation, so that they learn something, some skills, tailoring, weaving. Should, these are the two we have currently in our central prison. And then we are taking them through teaching and learning. And then we also have some bit of farming, vegetable farming, we now have bio farm, so that they learn something in a way that when they come out to the prison, they will be helpful to themselves and not go back to society. I mean, go back to prison. Now we have to stop stick, stigma. All of you, all of us, when someone goes to prison and comes home, let's welcome the person. So what we do now is that any prisoner who serves his sentence and is going now, we invite a relative to come to our central prison, embrace him, take him home. It helps in the reintegration process. So we try to do something for them so that they are better off than they came in. Yes. My name is Raj Muti. Please, sir, what, do you, what lesson do you learn in life? Okay. What lesson have I learned in life? Okay. Let me, let, me, let me answer it and let me see if that, that's what you mean. You know, life is tough. You, you, Brina, you hear the saying that life is war. It means that you have to prepare yourself. Opportunities are there, but they are far and in between. Now, for you to get a government job is quite tough. So for you, the young ones, some, some of us, when we were going to school, government openings were there. You completed if you teach a training straight with posted. And next we posted straight. Now even security service, let me I mean uh, uh, for want of a better way. Very few people like to join the security services. Now you become very competitive. So when you are at school, your mind should be to be an entrepreneur, not to finish and come and look for government jobs. For government jobs are closing, the office are closing, closing. So if there's any lesson I've learned in life. And I'm still learning, we all, we all keep learning every day. As I keep saying, is get the right information, ask questions, but prepare yourself. There's nothing like luck in life. It is preparation and opportunity. When the two meet, then you are good to go. And that's why some people say luck. So preparation and the opportunity will always come. And never, never give up in life. Never give up. When you give up, that's all. Beyond hope, there's nothing again. So no matter the situation, never give up. And I'm sure one day when the good Lord, Almighty Allah, will give you that opportunity. But that's a very intelligent question. Uh, all have been, but especially the last two. Thank you. Mm. Hello. Now call me Otina, and I'll gladly respond, God bless you. So God of Presence Service waiting on you.
every one of you will have a piece to taste. And so those of you that want the special buffet, please move to the reception for the buffet. Uh, so, uh, Commander, please, why are we here? Well, uh, thanks a lot to you, your listeners, and maybe anybody who is watching. Uh, this is uh, an invitation that we got from the management and the staff of uh, uh, Radio Wa that they have a hero's kitchen where it's an opportunity for people to who have attained at least some level in their lives, so to speak, to come and uh, share their experiences with young ones and then to inspire them basically and then to, to, to also have uh, an aspect of that, you know, just a little, uh, some cooking aspect, you know, to, to spice up the whole thing. So that's the invitation that we got. And then uh, as a prison regional commander, uh, I thought it was a perfect opportunity. And then uh, we, we made it today and I'm happy to see the attendance, especially the young, 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 young ones. That is very encouraging. You know, uh, they think they've inspired, maybe they got inspired. I also have also got inspired seeing the young ones. Yeah, so, so, so that is what uh, brought us here this afternoon. So what do you think uh, healthy cooking and uh, eating practices can do to us? Yes, you know, uh, 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 human beings, what you eat, what we drink, is what makes us. You know, we have a lot of uh, 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 communicable diseases. We have a lot of lifestyle diseases some of which were known in the past to be from outside, the, let's say the white man, so to speak. Now we have, we have a lot of them here, and it's because of what we eat and what we drink. So it's important that you know, we, 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 we eat healthy, get the best advice from doctors, from nutritionists, so that your food is healthy. It's not, it's not the quantity that we eat, it's the quality, health, health, and then also add Added to that should be exercise. That should be basic. All of us, all of us, we exercise, we eat, we drink in a lot of water. In this part of the country, you know, when the uh, dry season, the sun is very hot, so a lot of we need to hydrate ourselves a lot. So good food, good hygiene, healthy food is the way to go. So, so, so this is something I, 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 I like to encourage. Something that I do, I do, I try to practice. I drink a lot of water. You know, and then and, 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 uh, try to exercise and try to, to pick and choose what I eat. But once something gets into your stomach, it's in. <laughs> and if the, the, your, your, your liver cannot process it very well, they may have challenges. So, so, so that is a healthy eating. It's very good. Yes. Okay, so what do you have to say to uh, organizers of this event? Yes, yes. And then, well, I, it's a word of gratitude and to encourage them. To, 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 to continue to do it, invite more people. I'm sure this being the maiden edition, they picked a thing or two from it. If I one was just for the fire, that gave a feedback in terms of the cylinder beams at least three meters away from, from the, the, the banner. So I'm sure they'll take all these things on board, you know, and, 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 and maybe do a little bit more of the publicity. So they'll get a lot of uh, people, especially online. Exactly. You know, and then, and then uh, I'm sure uh, it, it, will, it will pick up. You know, you know. And maybe just by the way to just say that uh, someone who may not be, have been part of the program from the beginning, uh, my name is James, James Miele, I'm the Assistant Director of Prisons, I'm the Officer in Charge of West Central Prison, I'm also the Regional Commander of Prisons of the West Region. You know, we took over the command in, uh, on the 21st December. Prison, we you know, try to make some, you know, tries to bring some uh, improvement, that's how life is supposed to be. Whatever you meet, try to improve upon it from what your predecessor left. You know, so I want to take the opportunity, as I said earlier, to commend the management and then to, to, to our like to, to engage the, the, the media. I want to invite you to find a day and visit the prison. You have the you have the platform. But the prisons is is, is is part of the society. So as an institution, we as a service have to do a lot more to let people know what we do. And then you can come. But the prisons is a public place, it's maintained by the taxpayer, it's not a secret place. Security place, yes, but not a secret place. So the media do well to come. I was at your, your, your last, uh, I was 98, um, I don't know how many of you I saw there, I can't remember anyway. You were there, good. You know, so, so, so the media, you play a key role in, in, in everything. It is you that send the message. If what we are doing here, you are not here, who we hear about you, nobody. 
So, 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 uh, I like to encourage you to, 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 to do your work, you know, and, uh, and we are available. Any information you need, we'll be there to, to, to provide it so that together we can help these inmates that are in there because they are our kids and kids. If not one day, one day, you and I will not be safe. Yes, so, so, so that's what I have to say. So, kudos to the management and staff, you know, and then uh, we look forward to. Maybe air time as we move along to, to engage in other, on other issues concerning prisons. I was telling uh, uh, my brother, the, 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 the host, you know, we are ready to engage. Yes, yeah, so uh, why are we here? And your name, please. <laughs> my name is Smoke City Business Center. Okay. Yeah. I so, think uh, we came for. Is it what, what the names? Heroes Kitchen. Yes, <laughs> yes we okay. came for a program that they call Heroes Kitchen. Yes. Okay. So we came and witnessed it. It went all well. And okay. And yes. so, so when you observed the event, what, what are some of the new things you saw there? Uh, I think this is the first time I've also observed this thing going on. Okay. And this is the first time I'm here. I know some of the people around, but okay. I've not been here. And I've not seen something like this happening. Okay. I only watch on TV. Some, some similar things like oh, okay. that. Yeah. So it means it's one of a kind in the region? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so, so what do you think, uh, what we cook and what we eat, what do you think that has to do with our health? Our health? Yes. Yeah. You often see health uh, professionals talking about we should cook. Is it wholesome food? Uh, we shouldn't maybe buy food by heart. I think it's a nice program uh, that has come. As we entertain ourselves, we cook and we eat mm. and we go. We learn so many things too about the person who is cooking. Mm. I think it's very good. Okay. Yeah. When we were doing your presentation, I overheard you talking about salt. So what, what, why were you advocating for that? Salt, you said it was low. The so. salt was very low to me. Mm. Okay. It wasn't just at all, it was just very low. Okay. I, I didn't feel any salt inside. Okay. So so are you I advocating? Maybe didn't even add any. So are you advocating as no, a small portion? I said small. Okay. How do you measure small? Eh? <laughs> <laughs> eh? When it's not over, when it's not much, okay. eh? it okay. should be just be sizable. Okay. Okay. So it so what? In there. I thought he didn't even put salt. Okay. <laughs> so so you think salt plays a it plays a very important role in our life? No, it's spice. It's a spice. Oh. Okay. It's a spice. Okay. Eh? So. Not very important, but it gives some taste to the food. Okay. I think so. Okay. Yeah. So, so what do you have to say to organizers? Okay. Before, before so I, I come. The general overview about the food. The program. I, I was very happy when I came around. I thought maybe around one thirty <laughs> thereabout I will leave. But when I came around, it was interactive. The program was actually interactive. We want to hear more from the man, and as he's cooking, we want to understand him in certain context. Uh -huh. So you are bent on listening to him as the food is cooking, so that you get the full story that he has to share with you, which will also develop in a way. So I think the program was good. It was very good. I was thinking that the pot should be bigger, so that <laughs> <laughs> after after the event we all eat <laughs> from that pot. From that pot. Okay. I think it's also something I was also expecting. Okay. So what can you say about radio? Because you've been doing business with radio. Yeah. Thank for this program. Yes. Um, radio is 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 a good radio. I've not, I know I've been to uh, Radio Upper West when we really wanted to lunch to give names to our clubs. We went there and did so many things. But then uh, the interaction that we have with them, I see that this one, the interaction is a bit more, it's just too bad. Uh, come to me. And the actual, I was happy the day manager and the group came and uh, hijacked me. I was, <laughs> uh, I was so glad. Uh, I think it's a good radio. So when you do some of these things and add others, so many people will come. Uh, 
So what word do you have to the business community? What is your business person? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, for every business, we need to do some adverts for our business. Uh, um, like maybe weekly, monthly, or any other form. And you, maybe you need to also invite them to come and talk on this radio. But I think, as a business, sometimes you have the business and people don't even know where you are located, where you are. Uh -huh. So when you advertise and do certain things, you will open up your business to so many people. So many people will get to know you and you interact with your customers too. Once you are talking about what is it? Yeah. Take us to the smoke city business center. <laughs> uh, the smoke city business center. Uh, I basically uh, I sell smokes materials and smoke suit of all kinds. I also sell some portion of the thread too that they can use to weave the smokes. There's some aspect of it. Uh, it's not much. You know, people don't usually sell that much. You know, so I sell that portion of the thread too. But we deal with uh, so many things that has to do with smokes. We have the normal smokes. We have other shared like smokes that we sell. We sell bags. Uh, we sell school bags, bags of all kinds. And sometimes we sell sandals too for, especially ladies for now. Mm -hmm. Then we have food. Uh, what is it? How do you call a bag you put food for? <laughs> How do you call that? <laughs> basket. <laughs> no, not basket. <laughs> eh? mm. My man, how do you call that? Mm. Eh? You a bag you what? You put food inside inside to store for use. To store. To store the food, like cook food. Okay. Yeah. Lunch box or lunch, lunch bag. A, a lunch yeah. pack. Yeah. And okay. we sell those okay. ones. Yes. So, ma Madam Justin, I want to ask you this question. Yeah. How was your impression? How was your feeling when you heard your name being mentioned? No, it was as great. part of the program. Yes, yes, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> I said I enjoy everything that happened here. Uh, I was grateful to be here. And when they were mentioning the things that I said, I sell, and I know that it will be on your radio and even online too. Uh, I was very happy. I, I felt that you are doing me. Uh, I think you did well. You did me uh, something good. So what are your last words to tell the media? The media? Yeah, uh, this man like this, I've been with him for some time now, he knows. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, the media, the media, hmm, these days, I think your work is a bit difficult. Um, asking people to do your adverts, some of the challenges that comes and other things. But uh, this man we talk about uh, later, uh, earlier on, we talk about making, using the smoke materials to make uniform food. Okay. And he kept it in his platform. We talk about that. We are still going through those things. We are still going to see maybe some colors. You can use your colors that you have in the school to do it. Uh, so so people were saying, some of my mates called me and said, the smoke material is that heavy that you can use it to make piata. I said, no, you can make it lighter. Uh, some people are there, they will very light because uh, they believe that something that you are going to wear has to be light. Okay. So they weave, the weaving is very light. Uh, so where, where is the village? Like you are going towards Buse Road. There is a village there, they weave. Okay. And a man used to come from there to buy some thread for me. Okay. So she would come and buy, he would come and buy the thread and now go and they would test. So he was having customers outside Ghana that wanted something like that. So with the smoke material, uh, we can do so many things with it. It's just that most of the time we don't, we, are, we don't learn about it. And if we are to start doing it, you run into, uh, what will I say, the cost component will be high for, for you. Uh, uh, All right, so we yeah. thank you so much for the time. Uh, to talk to you. All right. thank you so, so how do you feel about the program? <laughs> yeah, so um, 
we, we had an exciting uh, program as it's the first of its kind in the region, which uh, is very good. Uh, I think getting someone to talk to us and uh, making a meal for us is, is really good. It's really good. Okay. I hope it, it continues. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what engineered you to bring your students here? Oh, yes. So um, I believe that children learn from what they see, what they hear, and uh, a whole lot of factors. So okay. I, I, I thought it wise that, okay. okay, once they are cursed and they are going to be, their parents are going to be here, they are going to have other influential figures like the guests yeah. present, okay. they will learn a lot of things. Uh, even from how the, the, the guest will work, how he will talk, the things he will do, yes. they will learn it apart from the profession uh, he is in. Okay. Yeah, so I think that was the main motivation behind uh, me bringing my pupils here. Okay. So, so what, uh, what, what, uh, what, what, what are the key words that inspired you from the man? So there are some words or key words he, 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 he mentioned that you think have done a lot to change you or transform some of your students. So what yeah, are those, so, those words? Uh, basically, he mentioned something like being determined and when a student asked him what inspired him to be a guest, yeah. he mentioned determination and something like resilience. Okay. So uh, I think my people took those keywords, being determined and being resilient. So once a, a person is determined, once someone is resilient, the person is able to achieve a lot of things, uh, as he has also been able to do by God's grace. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay.